Games can absolutely make us lazy. And I say that as a gamer because I know firsthand that if we implement games wrong in our lives and in our kids' lives, it will absolutely wreck our motivation, our will to work, and our want to do anything that is important or vital throughout the day, weeks, months, and years. But it's not all bad news. We have ways around this and ways that we can actually get things done while not cutting out games for ourselves and for our kids. So the first question is, how do games actually make us lazy? Well, it has to come back to this dopamine cycle that if you've watched any of my videos before, you understand I'm big on the dopamine. The gaming industry understands the dopamine loop, and that's why I'm so keen to explain it in all the videos. So if you hear me say it a lot, dopamine's full in the morning. And if we have dopamine induced activities, first thing, huge releases of dopamine come out. And why this is important is because dopamine's kind of like money in the bank, right? If we have a large amount of dopamine in the bank, we can spend it. But if we have no dopamine in the bank, we can't. So first thing in the morning, we refilled all of our dopamine bank and that is full, full up. Now, if we do things that have high dopamine rewards, we're not gonna have any dopamine for the rest of the day. And these are the things that we already want to do. So why is it important that dopamine is the driving factor here. We can always talk about discipline and systems and everything else, but it comes down to the motivation to do what's important. And as we're older, not everybody has developed this. And in young kids, this is definitely not developed, this system. So if we've spent all the dopamine first thing in the morning and we have no motivation left in the rest of the day, well, that's not good. So for kids playing video games, you go through, you play video games for the first six hours a day, and then Oh, you need to go do your chores. Well, I don't have any motivation to do my chores. There's no dopamine release that comes with that. There's no sense of satisfaction that comes with doing the chores, right? How do I do the homework, the work, the workouts, the chores, the things that I need to do that are essential in life? What makes us crave dopamine can be a lot of different things, but generally feeling bad makes us crave dopamine. So bad thoughts, anxiety, depression, or just kind of blase, right? So how do we combat negative emotions? So that's dopamine, like we, we want to feel better. But dopamine might not always be the long term fix. To control that dopamine circuitry and that bad feeling dopamine loop, we need to really control those inputs. And it's not the video games, but the negative emotions. We need to give our brains time to process those emotions. And that can be as simple as a one hour walk three times a week. And that provides up to 20% resistance according to the research. But Kids don't always wanna do the one hour walk three times a week, but it's those times where we give our brains time to settle and process our thoughts and emotions. We don't have those systems as kids, and a lot of that used to be when walking home from school or providing time that doesn't really force us to think about something in general, right? You start thinking about and processing your emotions. So what is that emotional resiliency bias? It reduces our desire for the dopamine release. So that might be video games, mindless doom scrolling on our phones or Facebook or social media. How do we actually focus on the studying or the good things we need to do that don't have the high dopamine release if we've now kind of dealt with the negative emotions that are forcing us towards dopamine release? Well, the, the part of the brain that's tied to that control is our desire. It, it's it's tied to value. It's subconscious in our brains and everything in our lives has a relative value, right? So our games are valuable to our brain because it gives us a dopamine release and that might be less or more than the value of studying or working or doing the chores. But how do we fix it so that the studying or the thing that we're trying to get our kids to do is higher than the video games? Do we just cut out the video games and just cut out the dopamine? Well. No, not necessarily, because now you're just starving the body of the dopamine release and it's craving towards those things even more. So what do we do? We, we have to actually go through and apply a pretty easy fix, which is write it down and tie value consciously to the two items. And this is going through on a piece of paper, write it down, don't, don't use media, don't do something like that, and write through the schedule. And it should be two different timelines, right? If I play video games first, our kids have to do this. If I play video games first, I'm gonna do this. And then realistically, what's the next thing? Not ideally, but realistically, what's the next thing that's gonna happen? Am I actually gonna get up and study or am I gonna to be too tired and emotionally spent? But if I do the studying first and I have a test on Friday and I study a little bit on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, 
I don't have to cram on Thursday night into Friday and all of a sudden it's all better, right? So it's taking the conscious moment of saying this is what's gonna happen and it might not work on the first day, right? They might be like, okay, I'm playing video games first. Guilt is gonna eat at them and then they're gonna to want to actually go back and do the thing that has more value because they've now tied, consciously tied the value to the low dopamine task and they realize that's gonna give them higher payoff in the future, which gives them more dopamine. Now, is it gonna reduce the amount of dopamine from the video games or the technology or other stuff? No, not necessarily. But it will take some time and we'll still game, but it won't be as mindless. It'll be more of a conscious choice and we're aware of the value and it'll start shifting over time. Now, something that provides input to the valuation is, is our memories, right? So we have like memory circuits and we have stuff that's happening in our head and our kids are tying their value to what their memories tell them, right? So they have a strong influence on their decision-making and value because that's, that's all of their, their consciousness is tied there, right? That's all their experience and they can only make decisions based on their own experiences. But memories value novelty, right? They, they value something that's new and different. If our brain's like something that's new and different for the memory circuit to tie it to, to good, what do we do? We make it new and different until it's something that catches and it's what they like and they do it, right? So we might not like exercising ourselves, but we try HIIT, we try yoga, we try Pilates, we try CrossFit, we try regular gym time, we try running, whatever it is. And we keep tying back to new novel things until it works. And we can try that with studying. There's many, many different ways to study, right? Why sit down and study in the same boring fashion every time if it's not working for us? Make it fun, make it enjoyable. Do something that makes it not suck, right? And as our memory circuits get rewired with this new novel thing, it'll help, it'll help that valuation. And the other half of that is video games already know to do something novel, right? So if you look at Madden or FIFA, now Football Club or Call of Duty, they will literally take out parts of the video game so that they can add it back in a few years later so that they have something novel to add back in and it keeps the players engaged. Is it shady? Yes, but it works and the video game industry understands this. I'm not gonna give examples of everything that will make something novel because it's gonna be different for every family and every kid. But the last real big part of this is that we have to kind of correlate what the pleasure is, right? So, so studying and work and everything isn't really fun all the time. But there, there's a real cool trick that Arnold Schwarzenegger actually came up with. And I think people have realized this subconsciously over the centuries, but our pain center and our pleasure center in our brain are actually really closely tied together and they control each other. If we're playing a video game and it's a stomp, it's really not fun. But if it's hard and we have to put effort into it, it becomes much more enjoyable. And it's kind of like going to the gym. If we put up the same amount of weight time after time after time, it's no longer fun. There's no growth to it. We're not struggling. But if we're going in and the first five reps are relatively easy, but all of a sudden on the sixth and seventh and eighth rep, it gets hard, but we can still accomplish it. That's where we enjoy going to the gym. I, I did something hard and I succeeded, right? And sometimes there will be failure associated with this and that's part of the pain. But we don't want to have the pain to, to be so hard that it's not fun, right? I wouldn't take somebody new to the gym and put 350 on the bench press and expect them to try and do that. And when they got their chest crushed, expect them to come back the next day, right? That's not fun. And that wasn't even an achievable goal. So we have to put a little bit of the struggle at the end so they have to work towards it. It's not super easy, but our kids will start gravitating towards like, hey, that was a challenge. I want a little bit more of that. And then that will get them back towards the thing that they need to do first. So really in summary, what I'm saying is yes, games can make us lazy, but it's if we don't parent them right and we don't apply them correctly, right? So they need to be in a certain timeline. First thing in the day, I wouldn't say be on your phone or have our kids on their technology or let them play video games first thing. They need to go towards the things that have lower dopamine rewards so that they have that motivation later in the day to get the extra dopamine from games and things that they enjoy. And lastly, we need to be super deliberate about our dopamine bank account. We want to spend more dopamine on less pleasurable activities to increase our motivation. 
I know a lot of that seems really weird, but from the per parenting perspective, the research is showing this. And if you wanna know more about that, I suggest one, checking out Dr. K, who's at Healthy Gamer GG, and two, going into a few more of the videos that I have linked over here, yeah, about all the ways that dopamine is induced in the gaming cycle and why our kids are so wired to go after gaming instead of the other things we think are more important. This is Wes. Do good, play hard, game on. I'll see you next time.